Hi everyone, here I have got a very sexy red dressing gown. It was supposed to be in time for the month of love, which I call February, but my uh, external hard drive, uh, the wire broke, and then I didn't get a chance to do it, but I thought this was great, and I already posted pictures to my Instagram, which you should see. Uh, so I thought, you know what, I'm actually still going to do it anyway. So if you want to know how to make this it's so simple so easy to make and you can wear it at any point you don't have to wear it for valentine's day you don't even have to wear it for anybody else you can have it just for yourself if you want to know how to make this then please keep watching you're going to need red chiffon fabric feathers and a matching thread all of these items can be seen in the affiliate link below to clone this, you're essentially going to need a dressing gown that already fits you. I have used the black dressing gown that I used when I made the feather um, wings. Uh, so you can use that dressing gown or something that really fits. I'd rather use something like a silk dressing gown because I think the thick one's going to add too much body to it. So something like this would be perfect. The tools needed for this project are measuring tape, pattern paper, pattern master, pencil, fabric and paper scissors and a hand sewing needle. Also you're going to need tissue paper. This is for cutting out the patterns on the chiffon fabric as it will move around a lot and will create uneven pattern pieces without any stability. Firstly you're going to need to draw around and slash the sleeves to make it wider and to make it a lot more glamorous. Using a tracing wheel trace around the point of the armhole meets the sleeve at the seam and then pencil all around the rest. Using a pattern master or ruler, mark out the curved areas and finalise on the straight lines. The sleeve on my original dressing gown was quite short, so I added length to it to ensure that the finalised one goes over my wrist. Split and slash, I roughly divided the cuff by three and marked two points. This is where you're going to open up the sleeve. To draw in one half of the sleeve on the fold, make sure you mark this on the pattern. Add a seam allowance all the way around except for the fold line that you've just marked. Paper scissors, cut out the two slash lines all the way up only leaving a thin hinge at the head of the sleeve. Lay this on a new piece of pattern paper to create the new pattern. Now you know how wide the cuff needs to be, you'll divide this by two as you're working on half of the sleeve. Then you'll measure the sleeve total. Before opening up, take away what you need for the total half and then divide by three and that should be the measurements of the width. Use masking tape to temporarily hold the sections in place while you draw around the new sleeve with the wider cuff. Once you've drawn the new pattern, make sure that you've copied the sides, the sleeve and the sleeve head. Cut the old pattern and rename it with a cut to on the fold that is the sleeve and the name of the dressing gown. Now you're going to work on the main body of the dressing gown. Measure from your waist down to where you'd want the dressing gown to finish and remember to note this down. You'll only need to copy the front half um, down to the waist and then add a little longer if you want something to create a little bit of a shape. A new piece of paper, I am pinning down the dressing gown at the seam points and this will help me accurately create pattern pieces. I'm going to trace around the armhole, shoulder, centre front and side seam to the waist point.
length of my dressing gown from the waist was about 120 centimeters as I wanted it to be sweeping across the floor so yours may be a lot longer because I am quite short. down the back on a new piece of paper although you're only going to copy half. Flat the front piece, mark at the waist and make sure you make it the same length. Make sure the front and the back match. At the shoulder seam, you're going to lay the front onto the back and if needed, correct the length. The back piece is going to be cut on the fold of the fabric. Make sure you write it on the pattern and then you name it correctly. So to help you cut a chiffon, I did three layers. So the first layer was the tissue paper, then I put the fabric on top, and then I put on the pattern, pinned it down, and then I was able to cut it a lot easier so the fabric wouldn't move around so much. I used the tissue paper method to stabilize the fabric. When I cut it out, I laid it down on one side first. Then I flipped it so the uh, tissue paper could still remain and still keep the fabric quite neat. Um, but then also I was, I, you can't really fold it if you do that method because then the fabric will kind of move. So it does take a lot longer, but I think the result is worth it in the end. I did the same thing to the sleeve, as each sleeve is cut on the fold, I cut one side and then I flipped it over and cut the other side. So each sleeve right sides together, leaving the cuff and the sleeve head open.
Next, right sides together, sew the front pieces to the back at the side seam and the shoulder seams. overlock a machine then use it to finish off the seams if you don't you can use a zigzag stitch onto your sewing machine next you'll need to sew the sleeves into the armhole right sides together and make sure that the side seam matches the seam on the sleeve pin them together and sew also what you're going to see that I did, I put like three pins at the side seam that I've done here and that makes sure that they match at the end but you'll see what I mean when you sew your own. At the cuffs, just fold over once and sew. Cut off any bits for the feathers that stick out or just parts that you don't need or that are going to look a bit weird. Grab a needle and just thread to arm's length and double it with the knot at the end. Working from the inner part of the cuff, you're going to sew through the fabric, then through some parts of the row of the feathers, then doing a basic running stitch. So you're going to go up, then down, and you have to make sure you go through the feathers as well as the fabric every single time. It shouldn't really show up and it will take a bit of work, but it's worth it at the end. I did this on the cuffs and the hem of the gown. Finally, you'll just need to finish off the centre front of the gown. As chiffon will fray over time, I decided to fold it over the raw edge twice and then sew it. But if you have an overlocker, all you need to do is overlock that first and then fold it in once. Um, but it's completely up to you. I don't have an overlocker at the moment, so I decided to do this instead. And that's it, you've made your own romantic dressing gown. Please like or dislike, comment and subscribe and let me know the kind of things that you want me to make in the future. 
Thanks for watching so much. Please keep safe and remember, this too shall pass. And I will see you soon. Have a great day.